Rusty Nelson and welcome to a like big comfy couch. I always feel like Mr. Rogers or something when I'm sitting here. This is my gallery in Kennett Square, PA. I used to live out in California not too long ago, moved to Kennett Square. And if you're ever in the area, I always say stop in and say hello, stop by the gallery, but welcome to my big comfy couch. Today, I want to talk about this and a few different test images that I use. And the reason being is that somebody wrote to me and said, hey, you keep talking about these test images. What are they that you use? And what exactly are you looking at? Because I've got a couple of test images, but I just look and it looks good, but I'm not 100% sure of what I'm looking for. So by no means is this a complete video on this, but it, I just want to talk about some of the things that I look for and maybe it'll help you out. And speaking of helping you out, as I was thinking about what to say on this video, I realized that through the years there's a lot of people that helped me out because I was trying to figure out who to credit with these videos or with these um, these images, these test images that I use, and a lot of them you'll find on the internet. Google them, you'll find them. Test images, inkjet printing and such. But anyway, let me jump in and name a few of these people. And By no means is this list complete, that's for sure. First one that comes to mind is Bill Atkinson. And you'll see some of his test images in here. There's probably three or four that I'm gonna mention or use. And I remember his name from the beginning, so Bill, I have never met you, but thank you very much. And some of these people I've met through workshops, some of them I've just met, some of them are friends. So I'll just cover as many and think. Jack uh, Flesher did, and I thought it, it was, it may have even been this one. He did a like a write-up from the image from Outback that came out of this, downloaded it from Outback, and talked about what he looks for, and I guess that's probably where I got some of the things that I'm looking for. So thank you. Another guy, Jose Rodriguez. Now, this is another gentleman that I met, or I didn't meet yet. We keep talking about meeting each other because we don't live too far away. But he's got a channel that he does talk a lot about printing on. And also on Sundays at 4 o'clock Eastern time, he has like a live talk. So you just come down and chat for three hours. Great guy, knowledgeable about all kinds of printers. I I don't know where he stores it all up in that noggin, but it's great. You ought to check his channel out. Uh, tons of videos. Also, uh, Eric Joseph in the beginning out on the West Coast. He does a uh, talk, if you ever get to see it, on like at WPPI or something like that, and teaches some classes on the world of inkjet paper. Great. You'll learn a lot. You get to feel about every paper there is under the world. Andrew Rodney, Digital Dog, another name to look up. He's got uh, older vids on YouTube that I remember when I first started watching him, I had no idea what this guy was talking about. Absolutely no idea. But now I look at it and go, yep, that makes sense. So jump out, Google him, take a look on YouTube. M Mac Holbert. Uh, met him through a workshop I did up in Maine Media and spent some time cracking lobsters with him and talking with him. And I really wanted to meet him. I was going to do something on my own with him when I was out on the West Coast, but that got messed up and I saw this class up there. So I decided to take it. If you get a chance up, Maine Media is a great place for workshops. He was one of the originators, I'll call it, of inkjet printing. And uh, it's not inclusive him, but him and Graham Nash, back in the day when they had the drums and the drums spun with the paper and, the, and fascinating stories in the history of it. A lot of knowledge with that man. J.P. Cabanegro, uh, or John Paul Cabanegro, uh, he's got workshops up in the Northeast and great workshops, bunch of printers down there if you get a chance and you really want to get into it. 
talking, sitting around in the morning, having coffee, coffee in his gallery, talking about prints and philosophy and that type of thing. And through him, I got a chance to meet his dad, Paul Caponegro, which I thoroughly enjoyed this guy because he is, and I'll call it from the old chemical days, you know, where you get your hands all stinky from chemicals. And he talks about the times when he met Ansel Adams and did stuff with him and how he learned about stuff in his life and how he got started in, at an early age. But one of the really kind of fun things that he said that stuck into my brain is that I hear a lot of people talk about the philosophy of this and how they got into this. And, and you'll understand what I'm going to talk about in a second here. And actually nitpicking every little thing. And we were down in his basement. We were going through some photographs and he was showing these photographs. And he puts up this one photograph, kind of taken on a dark alleyway. I think it was in Paris. I could be wrong. But there was a gentleman sitting there, kind of in the dark, reading a newspaper, just sitting there. And somebody else that was in the room said, boy, I'll bet you you were thinking this and what he was reading and how you framed it. He said, I just looked at the area, looked at the picture, looked at the image, thought about it, and then shot it. He says, I don't know what the guy's reading. And... Uh, it was at that point that I realized this guy was kind of like me a lot. I get out there, I look at an image, and I try to figure out, that's an interesting image, figure out the best way to frame it and get it hung up on the wall. And actually, I usually do a quote of the day. I think I'm going to do a quote of the day from him, Paul Caponegro, because there's one you'll see it in a second that I think is a classic because he's got it on his video, him JP and his dad, Paul, did an eight, 10 minute video on generations of photography. Look it up on YouTube. Great little uh, video between him and his dad. Love it. Absolutely love it. Anyway, test images. One thing I learned, I can remember when I first started doing these in printing. I started looking at them. I had a loop out and looking at it and looking at it. I wasn't 100% sure what I was looking for at the time, but I realized after a certain amount of time, I was losing the fun of photography. So I kind of stopped getting that, people call them pixel peepers. I get them every once in a while, they come into the gallery here, and I swear they have a loop in their hand. They're up there looking at it with one eye, and I'm going, what in God's name are they looking at? Nobody has ever come into this gallery and said, oh, this was shot with a Nikon. Oh, this was printed on this printer. Oh, this most they say is something about the paper or where did you take the image? Have fun with your photography. My biggest thing is the camera is my best excuse for adventure. And that is where I stay now. So I'm not going to get real in depth at these, but I'm going to pass, pass along some information of what I look at in these and what I'm looking for. So the basic process is I only have three or four papers I use here. A matte, a fine art paper, uh, a semi-gloss or a luster type paper, and I switch them in and out once in a while. I have a metallic paper and then an etching type paper that I use. So that's it. I get those down and I work with those. And how I do that in the beginning is through these test images. Then once I get done with the test images, then I will print out a regular print, a print that I like, that I'm familiar with, and I'll take a look at it. When I do this on a regular basis, anybody that tells you that they make a print and, oh, I get it right on the first print, they've either got a low level of expectation of what's going on, they don't know what's going on, or that's where their level of acceptance is. For me, after I make that first print, usually of a print that I know, an image that I know, then I go back and I start marking it up. And it's actually editing the image itself. And this is a real image that, that I worked with and notes that I put on there. I put the image away and then I come back a couple days later and I see whether there's anything else. I fix those things in editing and then I reprint the print I put it away, let it dry, I look at it, and that's usually the print that ends up as what I call a wall hanger. So this ended up being 
a wall hanger. I actually did that for somebody. Um, and that's the process that I go through. So I work with the papers, I get the papers right, I get the monitor right, I get that calibrated, I get the paper calibrated, I get that so it looks the best it can on the printer when it comes out. And that's it. Don't go crazy over, because it's never going to be the same between what you see on your monitor, and I know you've heard this before, what you see on your monitor and when it gets put out on the paper, because it's the same thing as if you're doing it on the internet, you're putting something up on the web, everybody's got a different browser. So I'm gonna say this right now. When you look at these images that I, we're gonna look at through Photoshop or whatever, these test images, the colors are not gonna be right. Because I don't know what you're looking at it. I don't know whether you're looking at it in bright light, dark light, big monitor, calibrated monitor, iPhone or whatever. So don't expect the colors to be right. But we're going to talk about the relationships and what I look for in each one of these to see what is correct. And speaking of that, oh, let me say something else. And I'll put the, the um, links to these down. I've got tons of books that I've read. A lot of flights back and forth, coast to coast. Jeff Shiwi, great, great name if you want to pick up one of his books. These are all great books. I'll go ahead and flash a couple more of them up here. I get kind of excited. Uh, Jack Nicholson, or uh, Jim Nicholson, I'm sorry. Uh, read that one a few times. And then a couple of more over here. And I will put the links down below so... Uh, if, you, if you want to look one of these up or read it, you can go ahead and order that through Amazon. Anyway, again, thank you so much for joining me. I want to jump get over to the computer and go through these. We'll try to run through them really quick. Like I said, don't get so hung up on these test images that it drives you crazy. We're going to look at just certain parts of it and that will help you to decide. And once you get that paper down, and you print, then you know everything's, you can just rifle it off. I put these test images away. I may bring them out five, six months later, take a look at them, make sure everything's still right. And then I pretty much know that the print I get, make my edit, I call it my paper edit. In other words, once the inkjet print is done, then I do what I call a paper edit and I re-edit what came out on the paper. Anyway, let's jump forget about this crap and go jump over to the computer and look at some of these images. I really hope they help you out. Let's go. Okay. I know I look a little different, but uh, just as I got off the comfy couch, I got a phone call. Um, to go play pickleball. So I went and played pickleball. So I just wanted to come back and get this done right away. Once again, first thing we're going to do is take a look at a f what images we're going to look at. And then we'll divide each of them up and talk about them. Please, the colors that you're going to see, once again, are not true to form because by the time they get to you on whatever instrument you're looking at they are just not going to look the same so when i talk about a color understand that you may not be seeing the exact hue or tone of that color but you'll get the idea so here we go first image that i always use well let's get me off of here okay let's uh, that should be it good goodbye rusty this is the first image that i look at usually it comes out if i'm on my 1000 it's the first copy i get out the first thing i look at is nothing in general i just look and see what the whole page looks like because i've done this so many times I know exactly what it looks like. The next image that I look at is this, Atkinson's balls, as I call them. <laughs> I'm sure he's heard that before. But we'll take a look at this and what I look at in here along with a bad one. Now, I, when I make a profile, this really tests the profile and I get to see 
right away? Am I way off? And you'll see when we take a look at a bad one. Or am I on? Am I close? The next one I look at, and this one is Keith Cooper, and you'll see his name imprinted on there. And we'll use that, actually, his name uh, to look at some certain things on here. But this is a great image for black and white. I also use it for color because I can see how black and white's behaving. And then the other one that I, I don't use a whole lot, and this one is uh, Graham Preston that I got through, I think it's on here, .co.uk. Articles. If, if you've never looked at the articles or done that and Luminous Landscape, great places to get information. But let's jump back over to the first image. As I dig into this, I, I've got the cursor highlighted. I may forget about this. It, Photoshop works weird with cursors, but I'll try to keep the pink cursor on there as much as I can. First thing I look at, bam, right away, I look at this middle image and the strawberries. And I can tell a lot by these two. One, this should simply be a neutral gray. That's what I'm looking for. And I look real quick to see whether anything's blocked up. We'll talk about this image in a little bit. Then my eyes always go over to the strawberries. And like I've heard been, that's been said a thousand times is the strawberries should be ripe and red looking, not oversaturated. And the green should complement that. And that's kind of what I'm looking for. If they look real yellow or brown, which is usually what happens, then you know you have a problem. Next up, down to the grayscale area. And what I'm looking for, first off, is on this ramp. Looking to see whether there's any banding through this ramp. You should see absolutely nothing. It runs from pure black all the way up to white. And that's exactly the way it should look with no divisions. Right above it is the patches themselves that run from black to white. And you shouldn't see in either one of these or actually any of the grayscale areas, the monochrome, you should not see any color cast uh, comparing that to the patches that are just above. And you should see separation in all of these patches. Now let me see if I can bring this up a little bit. Like I said, it's a little bit of a problem with the cursor. Next thing I look at right away, and I always get my attention, especially when I'm making and comparing profiles, ICC profiles, I look to see how deep into the black and how much of the white separation I can see. So this patch right here, you know, 255 is pure white, and this goes up to 254. And on my screen, I can just barely see 254, oh man, just really faint, 254, 253. And if we go all the way to the right-hand side, you'll notice over here, let me see if I can grab this, hang on a second. You notice over here, this jumps from white, and this is actually pure paper right here. So there is no 255 on here. This is just pure paper, so that's what your paper is going to look like. Coming over here onto the black, now on my screen, I can easily see all the way down into two. And I'm telling you right now, some papers you will never be able to see between two and four, but that's what you're striving for is to be able to see that, especially when you're looking at profiles. Now here's something to consider. Like I said before, don't get so wrapped up into this that you drive yourself crazy trying to get all the way down to two or being able to see the 254 because you just may not be able to see it on the paper, but you definitely will be able to compare ICC profiles to each other. If you really want to measure you can come up into the right hand corner and if you have a colorimeter and you have a way to measure this, you can measure this pure black patch up here. Uh, the same thing with these down here, these patches, you'll be able to measure those and see exactly what you're getting. Jumping just up on the left hand side, these ramps right here, first thing I look at is you can see there's a grayscale ramp right here. 
And right about the middle, if I draw a line right across the center, I'm looking to see that all of these colors become lighter or darker, all just about, I'll call it the equator for lack of a better term. Realizing that on the left is red, blue, and green. And that's what you're looking at. And I look to make sure that I see red, blue, and green. That's just a general look. Now these patches over here always tell me a lot. And I'll show you in a second what happens just between perceptual and relative colorimetric when, when you're using that in your editing or your printing. On these right here, for me with my printer, I know that when I have a good profile, I can see, especially in the greens, great separation between all of these colors. And the other thing you want to look at, I know in some printers have problems with blue. You want to make sure your blue here and over here on the left is not purple or purpley blue. The orange in this image, in this sunset, you want to see a nice gradient all the way up to the top without any banding. You want to see a halo right around these rocks. And there's a little tiny cloud in this area up to the left hand of the sun. You want to be able to see that cloud up there. Also, this is an orange, so there's still a little orange in this reflection here. And that's about all I really look for there is the gradient, and I have to admit the cloud, and I'm pretty much done with that. This over here, I believe these are lava folds of some type. What may look white to you right now is actually a kind of a bronzy look to it. So this should not be pure white. The other thing I look for is I try to make sure I can see deep into these lava shades, the, the lava flow into the shaded areas, and all of this is not blocked up. So the big thing is, is to make sure that you can see this Detail in here along this rock right here is one of the areas I look and down here and make sure that everything's not blocked up as far as your blacks go. Front and center, this giant ball here, you know, somebody put down in the comments what this is because I, I think it's just broken concrete or something, but I have no idea what this is. So here's what I look for in this. One, that it's neutral. Two, that it's got a nice gradient from pure white up top and a nice gradient all the way down to the bottom of the sphere. The other thing is, is there's writing on this part of this rock over here, which is a really faint area that I look into. And up here, I look to see that there is a nice gradient and I can see into the shadows of this rock and make sure that this is all not blocked up. This right here is also almost pure white and this is not pure black. So that's what I look for in there. There's also this little ring right here I look for, the shadow area in this. It's like a indentation or a rising in there. And that's about it, and then I'm done with that. Ah, uh, then there's the babies. You know, let me see what I can get these guys up a little closer here. So I'm not good with skin color. I'll be the, I'll be the first to admit that. But in the, this uh, Asian Island Pacific uh, girl, woman here, make sure that there's that her skin does not is not yellow. Like it doesn't have a yellow color casting to it. Also, her teeth are not white. So this is white up here and her teeth are not white. And I want to make sure that she is not too pink. Now this baby and this baby, a lot of people may go, okay, well, there's no difference for two white kids, but they're not. This kid's kind of pink and has gray eyes. And that's what you're looking for. You want to make sure that um, it doesn't get too pink, you know, like, like kind of like the cursor. And that's about it with that. This, the, the, the black baby, you want to make sure doesn't go green on you. And the last baby is kind of a, a little bit different. Looks like a tan baby to me, I guess. 
but you want to make sure that it doesn't go yellow on you. And that's about it for the babies. And if anybody else has anything else they look for, like I said, please put it in the comments. It'd be really interesting to find out. While we're over here at the babies, let's go ahead and jump up to the top left where it is a mumbo jumbo. So I'm sure a lot of people have things that they look for that are completely different than what I'm looking for. First thing that catches my eye is this scarf or whatever and make sure the skin tone looks right and make sure that this has the detail in it that, that I need. Also, this little itty bitty tiny image up here, I just look at the colors in there and these eggs, for some reason, always have a blue cast for, for me. And I jump up, here's your basic chart, so look at them as you will. But up in the top up here is this egg and I make sure that I can see the egg. Also, into the shadows here, you can see the gears and the detail in this image up here. And that's about it. Anything else that looks kind of whacked out to me, this is, I want to make sure that this area is not blown out and the light's not blown out. And that's about it. Next, let's take a look at the rock formation. So this is kind of a weird one. This has got a lot of tells in it. Why do I say that? These rocks, after you print this a few times, and you know, uh, Jose Rodriguez on his site, he's got where he uses an image like this as a base image. And he tells you, if you go over there to his site, he'll tell you how to print this, make sure that you're printing it without any color management. And now when you print this out, you basically have a base image to look at. Um, he, I think he calls it certifying your printer and exactly what it looks like. But anyway, this gradient in the sky, you want to make sure you have a nice gradient from this blue all the way down to the rock formation. Now, the thing is that this has a cyan cast to it. This whole area has a cyan cast to it. And if you have a, a profile or something's off, this is going to show right away. So this is another area I look at right away. It'll become way too cyan or these rocks right here I've seen a few times come out because they're kind of a deep burnt orange. And if they show up as really bright, then you have a problem. Next up, let's take a look at the aspen, or I always thought they were birch trees, but anyway, a couple of things I look at here. One thing is these leaves right here always is the first place my eye goes to, and I want to make sure that I can see definition in all of the leaves. Big, big thing, because if it's blown out, you won't. You'll just see a mishmash of yellows. The color yellow should be a nice yellow, not in your face yellow, with detail still in the, in the higher contrast areas. The next thing I look at is these trunks right here on these trees are big telltale. In this area right here, there are very subtle shades and detail that I look for. So this should be pleasing to the eye. Definitely see detail in the leaves and make sure that your leaves are not blown out right here. This next image, I really like this one because you can tell a lot by this one too. And like I said, once I learned what I was looking for, these were great images to use. First thing I look for is there is a reflection right here. And if your image is off, your profile is off, or you got crummy paper or crummy inks, you won't see this reflection. It won't be a detailed reflection. In other words, I can see this light right here and I can see the light in the reflection. And when I print it out, I can generally see the same thing. And if I can't see it, then I know there's something that's off. Also, I just make sure that these reflections up here in this CD, anybody know what a CD is anymore? Uh, up in this CD up here, have a nice color to them and it's not in your face. The next thing I look for is just a little detail down on the right hand side here and look at these buttons and that's about it. There's one more reflection right here that you can take a look at. And next, these strawberries are the biggest tell for me. And if they're off, their color's off, then 
that's definitely a problem. So that's generally it for this image. Now I'm going to show you really quick another image that is exactly the same. Let me grab it. All right, here we go. I am going to flip over to the other image. Now the difference between these two images, they're on the same paper, scanned from the same paper. One is relative and the other is perceptual. Now watch right in the center the difference between these two. Big, big difference between the two. I will do a lot with this when I'm making my profiles and when I'm printing because sometimes I'll write in notes how these behave. Because for me personally, I'm always going to use if most of my colors are within gamut. Now these images right here really push the gamut, the gamuts of these colors and on the paper. But generally, I will use relative and then perceptual if I'm pushing the limits on the gamut. So let's take a look at this one more time. You can definitely see the difference between the two. And if you look at the red, there's not a lot of difference between the strawberries. Not too much but definitely a difference in the greens. All right, here is one that I really love using this. And this is going to tell you, this is, I'm, I'm telling you right now, there's some people out there watching this that this is going to really frustrate them. There's a lot of people that think that they got a good profile going and all of a sudden they're going to use one of these images and print it out and go, holy moly, am I missing out? So. I'm going to make this brief, but this is, in my mind, this is, once again, not paying to the attention to the exact colors. Remember, down here in the bottom, this is, let me see if I can enlarge this a little bit. So this is, uh, you know, the red, green, and blue. Those are your basic colors. And then we can move over to the other colors. So first thing that I look at all the time, and you're looking at gradients in these balls. So this is Bill Atkinson's uh, his balls. This is the 14 balls. He has some other images, and these are computer generated that have a lot more. If you've got a problem in your profile, this is where it's going to show. First thing I look at, if something else doesn't catch my eye, is the gradient in these spheres over here. Basically, it should go from a black all the way to a white, and um, black all the way to the white in the center, and there should be no banding. So you can look and see in the black and white spheres, there is absolutely nothing. And say, okay, this looks pretty good. You always will see a little bit of banding. So you can see just right here, just a little banding here, a little bit of banding here. This, the yellow looks looks really, really good. The red, uh, let's see, the red looks okay. It's, it's kind of blocked up from here to here. And the green looks kind of okay. And you'll understand when you try to do these yourself because it is brutal. Now, the biggest area that I always have a problem with is the blue. And the blue is uh, B-I-T-C-H for sure sometimes. And you'll see, because I'm going to show you right after this, a bad profile. And it's a profile that I did. So as you can see, the blue's pretty good in here. On the right-hand side right here in the middle, you're looking for a nice even gradient from blue to white, blue to white. And as you can see, this is a nice blue down here and goes to a nice, almost a white up here. The guy, this is one, I, I just kind of look at it in general. I'm, I'm sure that I look for in his bathing suit that I can see detail. I look for the color and I look to see that I can see into the bucket and the color of the water is not real funky and the green, that's just the way it is. Over here on the left, you're going to see when we look at the next one, which is a bad one, you're looking for even flow of color. Now you can see up here, I'll try to enlarge this a little bit. You can see there's just a little bit of a band that runs right here. Just a slight band, but not too bad. In general, this is pretty nice. Up here, now, I'll tell you, 
The Digital Dog does a talk on one of his videos on Pro Photo that he uses this, uh, Andrew Rodney uses this image right here. And this is when I learned all about this image and using Pro Photo in your editing. So what I look for up here is I look to make sure that I can see detail in this white part of this towel right up here, the red, the gray, white, and kind of darker gray. I look to see that on the very top, I can still see detail in this area. Also down and see, you're just looking for, the biggest thing is the detail, because once you get these colors clumped up together, you're going to see it. You'll no longer, it'll just look like a blue blob here or a yellow blob here. You wanna be able to see detail I'm over on the left hand side over here in this image. If your blues are blocked up, this is all going to turn black right in here. You want to be able to see in the yellow, see this shade up into this color. These fish, you want to be able to see the detail in the blue mat here. This is a tough one to go through. And also look for the way this orange blends into the fish. And you'll get used to seeing, seeing these, but that's what I look for. I look for the detail, the scales, and the fish. Now, let's jump, and I, hopefully this will work. Like I said, you're always going to see some banding, and you can keep working. This isn't a perfect profile, but you will always see some banding. But I want you to look right now, look into the bottom right-hand color at the blues, and watch, watch the difference right now. Boom. This is a bad profile. And for me, I always seem to see the blue get blocked up. So what does this mean to you? That means anything that's blue in your image that looks like this, that is the darker blue, is going to be black. Take a look just above right here. This, remember we had a nice blue gradient right here? So now this is no longer, it's black right there. Take a look at these images or these squares right up here. This was this right here was the blue square. And if you look right in here on this patch or this image, this whole section right here is blacked out. So if you print out one of these images, and you see this image like this, this is the problems that you're gonna have. And I'm telling you right now, I hope you have a great, I hope Atkinson's balls show up just perfect for you. The other thing too is, look at the green right here. Let's enlarge this a little bit. This really, instead of going from dark to light, this starts to turn dark again. More problems. So anyway, that is this image and what I look for in this. And it really comes down to these balls when I'm comparing profiles. And so to recap again really quick, what I'm doing here is getting a piece of paper, creating the profile, and you can also use this image in your proofing also. Take this and proof through colorimetric and perceptual and look at different paper profiles using this image in your soft proofing, whether you use Photoshop or Lightroom. So I use this to tweak my paper and my profile to get it ready to say, okay, this is my final profile that I'm going to use for this. Now, the next thing is let's jump over and take a look at the monochrome or black and white image and how I use that. Before we get started on this image, uh, obviously where you see northern light, northern, northern lights, northern light images up there, this image has been downloaded in various versions all over the place. When you print this specific copy that I'm using right here out, and this was done by Keith Cooper, and, and it's been upgraded and changed depending on printers and how things are changing in the world. At 300 DPI, this will basically print out on a letter size piece of paper. So if it comes out to some weird size, 360 obviously, uh, it'll be a little bit smaller. 
anyway, just be aware that uh, this particular one prints out for me at 300 DPI exactly the way you see it here on a piece of paper. All right, at first glance, the reason I mentioned the DPI is that you look at the edges of this paper. You're going to see some numbers. You're going to see some sizes. When I first looked at this, I thought, what in the world are these diamonds doing out there? But then I started realizing after I printed for a while, I look at these diamonds because they should be all the way out to the end of the page and you should not see any smudging. That's if you're printing at 300 DPI. And you should not see any smudges in the paper. So this obviously, if you do, this can affect, especially if you are printing borderless, which I have to be honest with you, I have never printed borderless in my life. To me, it just messes my printer up, so I don't bother with it. But anyway, that's about it for the diamonds on the side. So you know that uh, before I did. Next thing I look at is dead center, right here and let me see if I can enlarge this. Like I said, I'm working with a weird cursor in uh, Photoshop, so it's kind of strange. I make sure that I can see detail all the way up into the white area over here and all the way down into the black area. Now on my monitor, I can just see to the edge there. Uh, I also have a light right in my face uh, for the camera on the recording. But I can also see detail right here on the white edge. So that is the first thing I look at. Next thing is the actual ramp. I'm making sure that there is not any banding in this at all. Zero. You don't want any banding and you should be able to see the clean text easily even down into this T. Something I, I kind of forgot to say that I look at first of all is neutrality on this. I'll take something that I know is black or another image that I know is neutral and I'll put it next to it. In fact, where I usually put it is right on top of my Canon printer because that is black to me. And if it has a color cast to it, you're going to see it right away. Next on these on the bullseye and right above it, right here, you're definitely going to be able to see a gradient problem. You want to make sure you see no banding in here. And probably if you have some bronzing or a problem uh, with color differential or the color changes in the ink, you're going to easily be able to see it up in this upper area. Uh, I call this the pyramid. I know it's not, but it looks like a sand dune or something. And it will be fairly evident to you. Like I said, if other people have other things that they look for, man, just please put them down in the comments because you're going to help out a lot of other people. All right, if we move over into this area right here, this is from 1% to 5%. So you really, let me get this more in the center here, one to five percent and you should be able to see a gradient all the way down and at the end of it in my monitor i can differentiate between the one percent and the plain paper so that's pretty much what i'm looking for there right above it is the picnic table area and you definitely should be able to see some detail i can actually see what is a horizon right above the picnic table and there is noise in in okay in this gray area in the mist there is noise there's also a little piece of something that sits on the ground that i look for and that's about it but i definitely want to be able to see the detail and see these little trees here and in the branches all right i'm going to keep jumping around here this image which is up in the top right we'll get to the one over just to the left of this on the lake because i want to flip the the image sideways in photoshop but first thing I look for that I'm drawn to is these rocks right here. Now, I'm not sure if you can see it, but I can see it on my monitor. I look for detail right here in these rocks. And I look and make sure that I can still see detail all the way down into this area and it is not 
black. Next, I look and make sure if I can see that, I can probably see uh, Keith Cooper's name pretty much without any problem. And here is an enlarged area of that rock. Um, this right above here of the log, this is an enlarged area. And I look to make sure that I can see the bottom of the log and I can see detail. And this is going to tell you a lot about your profile. Obviously, there's a bunch of other detail that's in here. Now, in this window, I can't see into the black there. I never have been able to. I can see just into this window, small window on the right. But basically, that's about it for this image. On this misty image right here, what I'm really looking for is how far I can follow the detail line of the trees. Now, I can see it on the monitor right here. It actually dips down. And I'll tell you what, if you can see this in the mid-tones in this area, this is really good if you can see this in the paper, but you can definitely see a horizon that runs, dips a little bit there, and pulls down. This is a tough one. If you can see that, you're doing pretty good. Let me flip this image up on its side, and we'll take a look at the last part of it. All right, here we go. This is a, a great, I, I love this part of the image, because uh, this is just almost like a whole image itself. You definitely don't want to see banding in the sky. Plain and simple. But there is layers to these clouds, and you definitely want to be able to see those from the top to the bottom. They are very, very subtle. Next thing I look at is the boat and this piece of land right here. There is detail here, and there are layers here. It goes one, two, three, four, five, about five layers, and then to a very dark layer. And this fades off into almost pure black. So that's about really what I'm looking for. But I'm looking just to make sure in this whole area over here, I can see detail. I can see detail in the water, and there's no banding. Detail in the trees, and that's about it. You can see Keith Cooper's name up there. I'll say thank you again, Keith Cooper. This is a, a great image. I use it all the time. There's also some cloud detail over here in the trees. Now, the last image, let's jump over to that, and I really don't use this all that much. This was done by uh, Graham Preston, and this is another Northern Light uh, image. I only use this if uh, I, I just want to kind of compare and look at two different profiles and if I'm having problems with areas blocking up and I can kind of get a good idea of on these balls, I guess these are uh, Graham's balls, you can see detail, the layers, all the way out into 10. So I can see a difference on my monitor between 9 and 10. And you want to make sure that you get a nice gradient. Now, on my 44-inch printer, a lot of times I'll just take this and I use QImage. Oh, by the way, forgot to tell you, if you're really into printing, uh, people ask me, I use QImage to print, period. That's it. End of discussion. Uh, the guys at QImage, if you see a link down below, uh, there's a, I think it's a 10% discount. I'm not sure. I can't remember. But anyway, they will give you a discount if you use that link. And they will give you a discount even if you use that link with a discount. So it's a discount over a discount if you haven't used it. Great if you've gotten this far in the video. All right, that is about it. So think about this kind of recap for a second. We use these test images because we know that they're standard. Thank you so much for the guys that did this. I know that we could all make our own images, uh, but these are pretty standard. I've used these since I started actually, to tell you the truth. I use these images when I get a new paper and I know what these images are supposed to look like. I know how deep I can get into the shadows on these. On these, I use them to compare papers and profiles. And I also use them just to look on my monitor also to see what my monitor is doing after I calibrate it. You can also take these images and soft proof them in Lightroom or Photoshop. So you can use them for just about anything. They've just become part of my life with printing. 
Also, really quick, the Q image thing, the discount, I will put a link to one of those videos up top. And also, thank you so much for watching these videos. I hope you like them. They take a while to make. So please, if you like it, if it's been valuable to you, I would please ask you to go ahead and subscribe, follow the little guy down below. And I always say my camera is my best excuse for adventure. And printing is definitely one of those adventures. And I've met a lot of people through it. And there's nothing like holding a print in your hand. I hope you enjoy it. I will see you next time out there, hopefully clicking in about a week. I leave to go guide some people storm chasing, which should be really fun. And uh, I hope I come back with some good images. I'll see you out there. Thanks again for stopping by. That's it. <laughs> That's it. Oh, God, this is so long. <laughs> Bye.